Buenos días a todos al octavo Symposium de Libre. Este es el octavo año consecutivo que hacemos este evento, que para muchos, eh, para muchos de vosotros es un evento conocido, para otros es un evento totalmente nuevo. Eh, durante estos dos días eh, vamos a tener más de 40 jornadas técnicas y de negocio en las que vamos a estar hablando de retos digitales, retos de transformación digital y cómo afrontarlos desde el punto de vista de la tecnología. Como sabéis, aquí nos, estamos, nos vamos a congregar hoy cerca de 400 personas, eh, empresas de todos los sectores, partners, integradores de Libre, tecnólogos, usuarios de producto eh, y mucho, eh, mucho usuario también de la comunidad de Libre, junto con buena parte de... de bueno, de las personas que formamos parte de esta empresa y que formamos, par que formamos parte de, de Library para, para el sur de Europa. Como sabéis, nosotros mmm, hemos, durante estos últimos diez años hemos recorrido un largo, camino, un largo camino dentro de la innovación y también dentro del mundo de los portales y de las plataformas de experiencias digitales. Y para estos dos días yo os, os animaría a que... Prestéis atención, colaboréis, aportéis, escuchéis los casos de estudios que muchas de las empresas van a, van a explicar sobre cómo afrontan los procesos de transformación digital, cómo se acercan a esos procesos eh, y, que, y que aprovechéis para hablar con todas las personas que, que vais a encontrar en esta sala porque es un buen momento de, de intercambio, es un buen momento de aproximarnos, de aproximarnos a la tecnología con, con personas que vienen... En, bueno, que, pues, que están llevando a cabo procesos muy interesantes eh, y que tienen mucho que aportar. Como os comentaba, para quizá los que nos conocéis un poco, un poco menos, en estos diez años de trayectoria, eh, pues, pues eh, lo que es en España se ha creado, en la IBRE se ha creado uno de los centros de ingeniería más importantes de la IBRE en el mundo y muchas de esas personas que están aquí, que tenemos, bueno, pues somos un equipo de unas 100 personas entre las oficinas de España e Italia, eh, están aquí también hoy. ¿no? Por eso también es importante, si, si tenéis curiosidad en conocernos mejor, conocer cómo es la empresa, conocer cómo es, cómo, cómo es el producto, el evento de Library es el evento anual donde, donde hay que estar. También, bueno, sí que querría, aparte de daros la bienvenida a todos, antes de empezar con las sesiones, que ahora voy a presentar la primera sesión, sí que querría hacer unos agradecimientos, primero a nuestros partners y patrocinadores, que están también aquí con nosotros, eh, como Bast y Everis, que son pat nuestros patrocinadores Platinum, y también a Rico, Sopra, Zilk y Mimacom. Porque gracias por estar aquí, aportar vuestro conocimiento tecnológico, aproximaros, a, aproximaros al evento desde ahí, desde esa riqueza, y también hacerlo, hacer posible que hoy, podamos, hoy y mañana podamos estar todos aquí eh, juntos hablando de, de cambio digital. También quiero agradecerle a muchos de los clientes y, y empresas que van a participar contando sus procesos durante todo el evento, el asistir y, y el haber preparado los casos de estudio y el atreverse a subirse al escenario a contarlos delante de todo el mundo, como son Evo Finance, la ANTIC, la Diputación Foral de Vizcaya, AXA, Nueva Pescanova, Condi Supermercat, Carrefour y SPMS, que es, es el Servicio de Salud Pública de Portugal. Y por último, quiero agradecerles también a, lo, a los medios de comunicación que, bueno, pues que asisten al evento y en particular a dos de ellos, que son IDG e eh, IT Group, porque van a estar moderando las mesas de tendencias que va a haber hoy a lo largo del día, va a haber un par de mesas de tendencias futuras y ellos van a estar moderando esas mesas. Y también eh, quiero darles las gracias desde el Library porque creo que va a dar mucha más riqueza a, a la conversación. Bueno, pues esos serán todos los agradecimientos y yo creo que ya que estamos un poco todos más preparados vamos a empezar el evento y os quiero presentar al primer ponente de hoy, que es Edmund Dueck, es nuestro IMIA Marketing Manager eh, y es una persona que tiene mucha visión de, bueno, visión de tendencias, visión de, de dónde van las empresas a nivel, a nivel de Europa, dónde están los analistas, dónde tienen el, eh, el punto de mira en hacia dónde hay que transformarse. Y él va, va a acercarse a nosotros con una ponencia que se llama Creating and Keeping Momentum Proven Principle for Exceptional Experience in an Ever-Changing World. Eh, vamos a hablar de, de cuáles son los, él va a hablar de cuáles son los principios que permiten crear eh, grandes experiencias de usuario, 
para facilitar la satisfacción, la lealtad y, y, y el realmente darle a los clientes lo que quieren, cuando quieren y de, y de la manera más, más óptima y, y, y cómo desde el punto de vista de los decision makers nos tenemos que aproximar a esas experiencias de cliente. Entonces, os dejo con Edmund, Edmund Dueck y su ponencia y, y bueno, vamos a darle un aplauso de bienvenida. Gracias, Carolina. Gracias. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing this morning? With all the lights, I can hardly see you. Um, I want to thank you, first and foremost, for coming out, for coming out to spend uh, this day and uh, the next day with us uh, here um, in this beautiful venue. Um, we don't take it for granted that you as our customers, you as our partners, you as people who are interested in LifeRay, come and talk to us. Uh, we believe that in this very, very busy time, um, time is one of the greatest assets that we have, and so thank you for spending the next couple of days with us learning, exchanging, and uh, hopefully driving our businesses forward. Now, I want to jump into my presentation. We want to talk about experiences today. And I would like to ask you something. I would like to ask you, when was the last time that this happened to you? When was the last time that you, as a customer, as someone who is experiencing different things with different brands, with different companies, with different enterprises, with different organizations, when was it that you were truly, utterly in awe and amazed? For me, it was just a couple months ago. I heard about this piece of construction in the middle of Germany. This is the second largest suspension bridge in Germany. It is uh, just about two years old, and uh, it's quite fascinating. It has a story, and I want to tell you the story of this bridge and the people who built it, and hopefully we can draw some lessons from that. This bridge is hanging over 360, is 360 meters long. It's hanging over 10 meters, right, over, over this big valley in Germany. And it has seen a lot of popularity. A lot of people have been coming and visiting this bridge. Uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, in the fall, uh, as we can see here, or uh, if it's in the summer when a lot of people are hiking. But the special thing about this bridge is not that it, it's, it's amazing construction and it's an, an amazing, beautiful piece of architecture, but where it is and how it came to be. And it is literally in the middle of nowhere. And the next piece of civilization is about 1.5, 1.6 kilometers away, and it is this little village. It is this German village. It has only 630 people living in it. And the bridge came to be as a project where the people thought, you know, we want to revitalize a village. We want to make it attractive. We want to do something new in a village. And two or three people had this idea to build this bridge. And they wanted to create momentum they wanted to bring momentum, they wanted to bring new people to this village, a new attraction to this village, and it happened. And, you know, since then they had really, um, have seen amazing uh, things happen. And one of them is that there was no parking anymore in the village. So many people came that I think it is the only village in Germany where they have resident parking. You know, you're not allowed to park everywhere, you have to park outside at the parking lots. And then they discovered so many people are coming that they needed to install its own um, a budget for toilet paper, right? This you can see, they, they, they realized so many people are coming, we need to install an own budget for that. And indeed, the numbers are quite impressive. In these two years, 500,000 people, half a million people came to visit the bridge, go across it, go hike in the middle of there. And you know, I was thinking about the story and I was amazed about how it came to be. And I thought, you know, this is actually what we as digital leaders are all about. Now, I don't know much about you um, as, and how it came that you are here today, but I know that you are a leader. You are a digital leader, you work in the digital economy, and it doesn't matter if you use LifeRay or if you're implementing LifeRay, if you're looking at it or if you're familiar with it. You know, all of us struggle with the same things. All of us have the same challenges and the same things, and they are many. Today, digital leaders are expected 
to integrate digital into all aspects of their job. They are expected to work closely with other decision makers. IT is not just IT anymore, it's a, it's a business function, of course, but they work together with the CEO, with the CIO, with everybody else, right, that is there, um, and you're expected to do that flawlessly. We are expected to make progress quickly. We need to bring bold vision to the projects that we're doing. We need to coordinate and manage change. And we need to navigate sometimes maybe traditional or complex organizational structures. And all these things can be summarized in these couple of words, and they are create and keep momentum. It doesn't matter if we are a startup or an organization that has been around for many, many years. It is the same thing always. It doesn't matter if it's a museum or a bank. We need to bring customers and create momentum so these customers tell other customers and are satisfied. And so in my job, I get to travel a lot. I get to talk to a lot of people. And I wanted to summarize these principles that I see. And of course, your situation is unique, right? Maybe you find yourself in a situation, but um, your situation is unique, and I'm very, very much aware of that. But still, there are some principles that I see, there's patterns that I see when I talk to people, and trends that I see in the market, and I would like to summarize them in a couple points, and they are really principles how to create this momentum and how to keep it going. The very first one is, unbridled positivity. We could also say untamed positivity, right? Something that is out there. We need to be positive about our projects. And here's why, right? Um, the former CTO of IBM, he says the following. He says, you know, banks, insurances, telecoms, they used to be at the forefront of digital innovation. In the 70s and the 80s, they digitized early. Remember when you did your first transfer in the bank, right, digitally? or when you had your first cell phone, right? It was amazing technology back then. Now, we just take it for granted. A lot of things are there, and these systems are still inside of our organizations, and they are choking us up. They are right now with their silos and with their old structures. We cannot turn them off, right? We still need them, yet we need to innovate. And that's the challenge, you know, how to stay positive in this environment. And even if you're starting from a green field, it is the same thing, right? You need to stay positive because there's so much competition out there, there's so much change out there, there's so many new things coming that we need to look and stay positive. Here's someone I would like to introduce you to. This is Ann Anderson. Uh, she's a customer of ours uh, in the United States of America, and she had the same challenge. She's running the partner business for HP Enterprises. And they looked at their different systems that they had, and they had many, they had, I think, over a dozen different systems that the partners were logging into and finding the information, getting training, support, et cetera. And they said, we want to start from scratch. And they, they, they looked and they said, what do we actually want to accomplish? And the project was quite big. They had to bring together 650,000 users right, in over 170 countries with 25 languages. And it, it was a business function that was very, very important to them, and the partners were complaining that they were losing deals because they didn't get the information on time or couldn't find the information they needed to do. And so they started, and they had 10,000 survey comments in the beginning. Right, partners complaining, partners saying this, you need to change that, this is what we want to see. And they said, we would like to create one platform, one unique thing where all the partners can go and find their information. And that's what they did. And with amazing results, they researched and they said that people who use the platform frequently, and this is uh, for a couple of years now, right, and it's been innovative, innovative um, and, and you know, secure and all that, these things, 17 times higher um, of productivity, all the people who use it, right? It, it, there's an actual financial outcome to this. And so, it's no surprise that they were voted, that they got this prize, the best portal for partners, um, and they could only do this because they said, we're going to stay positive in this, we're going to tackle this issue, and we're going to go, right? And this was the same thing was we see with this bridge project. 
they could have said, hey, let's, let's do something very small. Let's, let's think small. And, and again, I, I brought you a picture, and this is really out in the middle of nowhere. But if you know anything about social media, right, for something like this, in, in a matter of two years, to get 4.6 stars with 700 reviews, right, um, and different comments spreading, word of mouth spreading, etc., this is quite a feat. And they kept this momentum going, and I will tell you later why. Um, here's one statistic that I would like to bring your attention to. You know, 21% of the budget nowadays, of the marketing budget in a lot of enterprises, goes to tech spending. But yet the decision makers in marketing, and they're closely tied to you, the IT people, right, is they say, uh, we still don't have enough technology to make the things happen that we want to see happen. And part of it might be true, there might be obviously features or different things, but in my experience, when I talk to customers, they never see, hey, we don't have this piece of technology that, that's gonna revolutionize everything. In my experience, it is always about how do we stay current? How do we stay current in an ever-changing world? How do we, can we push this project forward you know, in a, in a quick and an efficient manner? And so it is not necessarily about technology, and it is funny that it comes from us because we're a technology company, this is how we make a living. But we need to understand that it is always this positive attitude, this culture that we need to fix or bring into motion first, and then it is the digitalization, the digital processes, digital transformation second. And so we summarize, to create and keep momentum, we need unbridled positive leadership. The second point is innovative grit. We need to work hard. We need to work hard, why? Because in the age of the customer, it is more important than ever to give the customer what he wants. And it's funny, I, I go to a lot of conferences and people say, you know, it's all about the customer, it's about customer experience, in the past it was about digital transformation, etc. cetera. Um, and I, I understand what we're trying to do, but I also think it's funny because can you tell me as a business, as a businessman, as a businesswoman, when was it not the age of the customer? When was it not about your customer ever? The customer was always king and it's really, really easy. They, they, there's three things that we need to do to be successful and work hard on these three things. And these things are, we need to find out what the customer wants, right? Um, we need to find out who this customer is in the first place and we need to give that to them. But there is this, this thing that we need to, to, to take once we've done that, right? And I see this in leaders all across uh, Europe, actually, and also worldwide. People who have said, okay, we want to help the customer succeed in whatever they're doing. Please meet uh, Peter Lastowska. I, I met him in Prague just about a month ago. I went to interview him. Uh, for a certain project, and uh, he told me this story. In the middle of his office, there's this bike sitting there, right? I came in, there's this old bike, and I asked him, why is this bike sitting in your office? And the gentleman said, well, you know, this, this was a gift from my colleagues, and they gave this to me because in my free time, I ride with a mountain bike a lot, and sometimes I have, uh, I have accidents, right? I, I break my shoulder, or uh, there's something with my knees, etc. And so they gave this bike to me, to, to show me maybe I should slow down a little bit, right? And he says, you know, it's true and it's actually a metaphor. It's something that we can see also in my workplace. Um, of course, we need to be careful, we need to be secure, we need, we need to be all these things, but also we need uh, to be able to say, uh, this is not just an evolution, this is a revolution. And in order to be part of this revolution, we need to work hard and we need to help the customer be brave. You know, his bank, um, this gentleman's bank, uh, is uh, in the building loan business in the Czech Republic. And right now, this is a very high, uh, uh, difficult market. The interest rates are quite low, right? And people are still building and, and doing things, taking up money. But for him as an organization, it is still very hard to keep the business. And yet he says, we are one to help our people be brave. And he does the right thing because he puts the customer in the center of attention. He knows already who the customer is. He knows what he wants or what she wants. And then they do everything to help them. And I think that is important for us to do 
and it's important for us to do against all odds. I brought you this picture, and this picture is uh, a screenshot of a page, of a seven-page letter that this village got back from a tourism agency that uh, was supposed to fund their project. And what the tourism agency said when they were asking for funds, the bridge was not built yet, they said, you guys, you know, we, we took a look at the numbers, and you will never have so many visitors, right? Your projection for the visitors, for the visitor numbers and everything, it, it's, uh, it's beyond everything that we've seen. Um, you know, and they, they gave the five top attractions for, for that area, and they said, hey, you know, look at the visitors number there. Um, this was a very, very nice castle in the area, and it gets 250,000 maximum visitors per year. And he said, surely your bridge will not draw that many. Well, uh, as I've told you earlier, this village, these people who built this bridge, they proved them wrong. But you know what they did? They, when they got this letter, they were not dismayed. They were not said, oh, okay, well, we don't get funding. Maybe the project is dead now. They went ahead and they secured the funding through other channels so they can make this happen. They were very brave. And so we can see how this is changing our culture. For example, uh, this is uh, maybe something that you're familiar with. There's an amazing restaurant here in Madrid. It's called Street XO. It's run by one of the Michelin uh, chefs here in this area. And he opened another restaurant just like that in London. I've been to both places, it's a fantastic experience. Everything in detail is really fits, right? And um, one of the things that the chef does is he took, takes a look at the social media pictures of people posting their food. You know, nowadays we post food all over the social media, right? And people are posting their food and then he calls the restaurant and he says, hey, this was not the way it was supposed to be, please fix it. And so there's a real-time aspect here that's going on, and I'm sure that it is very, very hard work, but it pays off. It's one of the best-rated restaurants right now in London and obviously here in Madrid as well. And so we summarize, it doesn't need only positive leadership, it also needs innovative grit with purpose if we want to keep up momentum. And the final point is authentic empathy. Authentic empathy, and let me explain to you what I mean by that. Really, customer experience can be measured in these three things, right? Stay with me here. So um, when you are a service provider, when you have a good to sell, all these things, it's about three things, right? The first one is, how effective am I in delivering value to the customer? The second one is, how easy is it for the customer to get to that value? And number three, and this is probably the, the hardest to, to, to measure, especially when we are in a B2B, in a business-to-business -business area, right? Um, how, how, what kind of emotions does this elicit in me and what do we carry over? And I believe this is very, very important that we focus on all three of them. And um, in, in, in customer experience or in service experience, we, we talk about moments of truth versus moments of connection or moments of emotion. Moments of truth are when I find out the quality of the piece um, that I, I bought, right? The TV that I bought, the car that I bought, the vacation that I booked, etc. right? Um, and it's either how it was advertised, or how it was expected or not, right? It also, in the customer process, in the buying purchasing process, be it online or in the store, I can see how easy was it for me. These are moments of truth. I find out, does the brand deliver what it advertises or what it says it will be? Now, the emotional aspect, it's much, much harder to control, right? The other things, we can still set things up. We can say, okay, this is how it is. But emotions, obviously, are very, very strong driver for us as humans, but they are the hardest to control, correct? Right? And so what we need to see is that we go after these things. And, you know, especially for, for us as IT people or people who work with technology, this is something that will, will change the future fundamentally if we, if we look and say, okay, how can we not just deliver the best user experience, but also see how can we give the person what it really is looking for? Please meet uh, Mark um, 
Lindstetter, this is a gentleman who works in Germany. He is the CMO of a bank, of a subsidiary of Societe Generale. Um, it's Gefa Bank, and they specialize in leasing and giving loans uh, to companies who are in the construction business. So if you would like to buy a big truck or a crane or an excavator, you are um, getting financing from Gefa Bank in Germany. Right? And this is their website. And they built this on LifeRay, and I've, I've been able to see this kind of this evolution of the website over the last one, two years. Um, and it's quite amazing, really. You, you can go on this website. Um, right here in the beginning, you can say, okay, I, I would like to get a quote. How much can I finance, right? Um, let's say you would like to build or, or something and you need an excavator for it. There's all these kinds of brands listed and you need it very, very quickly. So you need to see, can I finance this? Can I put this into the job? Um, you select the brand. Volvo is a nice brand, so I, I chose Volvo, right? And then I said, okay, let's see. Uh, this uh, thing might cost me 200,000 euros. I really don't know how much ex excavators cost, but let's just say it costs 200,000 euros, right? Um, and then we, we type that in there. We then we say, okay, this is how much I can pay. And the system guides me, right? If, if I put something in that's beyond the parameter, parameters, it says, oh, oh, wait, you know, you need to stay in the parameters. There's, it's a good user experience. And so right away, I have the information that I need. If I would like to finance this over a period of over 40 months, here's the amount that I have to pay. And because uh, I'm so grateful, uh, Carolina and uh, Jorge from LifeRay, they get to pay for this excavator, right? Um, and so I think this is an amazing experience, right, that you can do in a matter of minutes. You can see how is my business going? Um, is this something that I want to do with? And it's, it's nice because they really look marketing and IT together. How can we make this as easy as possible for the customer? I noticed that recently they introduced the feature of uh, video ID. You know, if you go for a loan, you need to identify yourself. Not everybody can do this, right? And, and so what they introduced is that you don't have to go to the post office or to the bank. You can just do the ID right here with us, and we ID you, and after we ID you, we can go through this process, which is really, really paperless. And what, what is amazing to me, and I know this from Mark, because I talked to him on several different occasions, and he says, you know, it's not for us just IT building it, or marketing building it, it is marketing and IT together. I talked to an analyst just recently, and uh, this analyst told me, you know, right now what's happening, we see a little bit of the revenge of IT, because marketing and business decision makers have said, we need this system, we buy this, and we gotta do this, and they went ahead, but now the systems are not connected to the other systems, and they cannot deliver a consistent customer journey. But you know, if you are in the IT business, I would like to tell you that you know, authentic empathy or the emotional experience will need both marketing and IT working together in order to, to deliver really, really good customer experiences to the customer and deliver what they really want. Now let's go back to this, to this bridge example, right? What did they, did they do in order to show empathy? After a while, they realized that the numbers are so fast that um, people are coming to this bridge really, uh, you know, on a very regular basis, or a lot of visitors are streaming in. And they were counting the people, and they said, let's do something special for the person who is the 100,000th visitor. So number 100,000, right? They were counting it with video technology. And so they were waiting that day on the bridge when it was 99,989, and et cetera, right? And they were, they were already looking, there's a person, and they had champagne, and they had flowers, and once that lady walked up, they gave her flowers, and champagne said, hey, congratulations, you are there, and you are the person who is gonna be here 100,000 walking over the bridge. Now, there was an amazing experience. There was an article in a newspaper about this. This lady, she came with her husband um, for f two hours away, and she had an amazing experience. Do you think she will forget that? No, because and it, was, it was something special. It honored her. And I think if we do that in our lives, right, and if we notice it around, then we do that. This is a typical piece of advertising. This is from an airport here in Europe, right? And I, I stopped at this advertising, and I filmed the people because right here in this, in this room, 
we are business people. We, some of you travel um, extensively, right? And, and you can identify with this, right? There's a gentleman, we talk often at airports, etc. But then I took a look, and I would like you to take a, another look at this video. How many people in business suits are walking by right now? There's not many. And yet, in the center of this brand, and I don't want, I don't want to put this brand out there, but I just want to say, the emotion that it elicits in people who are sm traveling with smaller children, who are not traveling for business, right? Who don't have the, the money maybe to afford business class. It's something else. And I would like to challenge you, right? Because here are some of the people that you are serving. I was recently at a conference, and they are customers of ours that were at, at this conference, right? Your customers, our customers, and they were asked, if you could do anything in your life really quickly, what would it be? And some people wrote code, right? Uh, obviously, coding is the future, digital transformation is the future, etc. Others said, I would like to learn Italian um, or another language very fluently. But a lot of other people wrote this down. And it has nothing to do with skills. It is more something that happens inside. Something that you know, the customer truly is looking for. And then, you know, I was curious and I typed in, I typed in empathy in the App Store and it turns out that you cannot find empathy. There's no, no app to, to show you empathy on the App Store. And I believe this is our big chance if we want to deliver really good customer experiences beyond technology that connect on an emotional level with our customers, then our best strategy is to care about them to care about them, to care about your customer, to care about the people who are paying our bills. And so we summarize in these three points, it's positive leadership, it is grit with purpose, and it is authentic empathy for our customers. And I, um, I thought, when in my life did I have an experience that would summarize all of these things? And I remember buying a book I remember buying a book that I used a lot for reference and inspiration. And then in the middle of the, um, in small print inside the book, it was said, should this book wear out, right, because you use it a lot or it breaks because of quality, we will send you a new one free of charge. You know, and after a while, um, indeed, my, the, the book was losing its, its pages, etc. And so I called this company, this publisher, and they said, yes, it's true. Um, this is about customer experience, so we'd like to send you a new book. And I said, okay, uh, back then I paid about $30, $35 for it, or euros. Uh, could, uh, do I need to choose something of this value? And he said, no, you can choose anything from a store. And I was amazed. This lady at the telephone, she recommended me something that was double the value. I settled them for something a little bit more expensive, and they sent it to me. They never asked questions. It was an amazing experience. I will not forget it because it connected to my emotions. And to this day, I still recommend this publisher and buy books from them. Now, what do I want to say with this? I do believe that in our world that is really, really fast and very, very fast changing, it is possible to deliver really good customer experiences that surprise people and connect with them emotionally. And you know, um, I think here you have come to the right place. We would like to give you the tools and we would like to give you the technology to do that. But ultimately, and I say this a lot when I stay on, um, on stage, you as our partners, you as our customers, you as people who are looking to partner and work together with our technology, you are the heroes. You are the people who are making this happen. You are making the digital transformation happen. And so I would like to encourage you, go out there with a lot of positivity, with a lot of hard work, and with an eye for your customer, and you will see that it will work. Go do something great. Thank you.